uh, welcome to this particular module. In this module, we will be looking at how to use the uh, sensor that is flexible sensor to understand the tissue uh, properties right. So, if you uh, if you remember in the last module what we have seen or group of modules what we have seen how can we design a sensor with a piezo resistors and a, S, uh, and a goal pad with an SU8 pillar. Now, what is the role of that sensor and uh, uh, how can we measure tissue property. So, if you see the uh, slide uh, you you have to concentrate on this particular figure ok and here what you see is a 3D printed cone. So, the, if I draw it is a 3D printed cone with a shape like this, hmm, the shape like this. Over this we are attaching our sensor. So, attaching a sensor there are SU8 pillars hmm, and there are lot of wires, lot of wires that is connected to that is connected to a holder right you see these are wires right Our sensor is right over here. Hmm. So, if I draw with a different color it will be little bit easier probably I am attaching my sensor right over here the tip because the flexible sensor I can attach it like this right on the sensor I have my contacts right I have my contact pads like this and on the contact pads uh, and finally, I have a SU8 pillar right which is also conductive hmm? and I, I have my sensor with a piezo resistive material as well. Now, if I have a, a bottom plate bottom plate which is conductive like this which is a mesh gold mesh gold mesh right on that if I place the tissue if I place a tissue right and so I can have a contact to that right. Hmm. This is the contact pad contact pad. Hmm. So, what will happen if I indent this if I indent right. So, if I press this tissue if I press this tissue then there is a piezo resistor on the sensor right. So, depending on the stiffness of the tissue depending on the stiffness of the tissue depending on the stiffness of the tissue right my sensor will bend and that will show. So, the change in resistance because the piezo resistor can be used to understand what is the elasticity of the tissue, what is the elasticity of the tissue. Now, you know that there are goal pads and there is a uh, goal pad on the sensor. So, if I apply a voltage, if I apply a voltage across the tissue by applying let us say V 1 here and between two pads let us say P 1 here and P 2. If I apply voltage between P 1 and P 2 and if tissue is in between then what will happen there will be flow of current there will be flow of current depending on the resistance of the tissue right. If I apply voltage between pad 1 which is my gold pad on the sensor and pad 2 which is the gold pad on the glass on which the tissue is placed and since this gold pad on the glass is conductive right I can apply voltage between P 1 and P 2 and if there is a sense if there is a tissue in between the depending on the resistance of the tissue I can see change in current right. That means, I can measure the resistance of the tissue as uh, the cancer progresses or in another way. Uh, depending on the type of cancer the resistance of the tissue may, may be different and we can measure using this technique right. So, that is what is shown here this is a micro grid right uh, with a glass wafer on which there are pads like this which is here right there is a mesh you can see here SEM image right SEM image 
and now when we place the tissue we can see the uh, microgrid with tissue right and then we have a 3D printed cone uh, as a part of this particular uh, lectures uh, I will explain you wh what is 3D printing how can we use it and uh, right now you just assume that we have printed a uh, cone using 3D printer and um, uh, flexible sensor I already discussed and this is connected to a holder right. Now you come back to this particular image. Hmm. In this image what we look at? We look at again please uh, look at the slides. Uh, in this image what we see? We have a inverted microscope. We have an inverted microscope right. Inverted microscope is there uh, tissue uh, a holder is there holder is there on which this 3D printer cone is attached right right over here hmm. and this is connected to a MP285 micro manipulator. MP285 micro manipulator. As a part of again uh, the lab component, we will show it to you how the MP285 micro manipulator can be used uh, for such applications, okay. And how can you move in x, y, and z uh, with the precision of few microns? And you can uh, use this MP285 micro manipulator to indent the tissue with micron precision. And then we have a sensor electronics which is an electronic module uh, and there is an Arduino board as you can see here. You can use a Raspberry Pi depending on whatever controller you like. <coughs> the idea is to change the resistance to a voltage value and, uh, uh, and, and, and this one you can, you can. So, the main question in this particular uh, study is why we have made a grid of micro array instead of making is as a uh, complete gold pad like what I mean is that you see here right this one is gold pad no like this suddenly why we have uh, created a mesh why we cannot create a complete gold pad like this because our idea is to use this pad right as a uh, to apply a voltage to the tissue right. So, if I use this as a gold pad instead of making a mesh uh, can I use it or not? What is the purpose of making a mesh? Why do, can I use a gold pad like I am showing it to you here, right over here right? What are the limiting factors? Why we have not selected uh, a, a, a thick pad and why we are going for a microgrid array right? That is our query that is our question right? Why? It is very important to understand why something is why, why we are using a particular design, then what is the purpose of that design, then how we are going to fabricate that design, right? How we are fabricating that pattern. So, my question is can I use this pad, a thick pad, instead of instead of the mesh that I have shown it to you in the design, right? If I place the tissue on this. Right. If I place the tissue on it, right, still I can indent the tissue, I can still indent the tissue and I can apply voltage between this pad and the one on the sensor, right, I apply voltage. So, uh, I'm applying voltage here and here, right? So, what's the purpose of having this mesh design? If you think hard, it makes sense to have a mesh design over a complete pad because we are using a we are using an inverted microscope. So, the light will not pass through the gold pad. But if I have a mesh structure on glass, the light will pass through that mesh structure and thus I am able to see where I am indenting the tissue because my sensor tip is extremely small, extremely tiny, right. Does it make sense of using a mesh over the complete gold pad? Now, let me uh, run the video, right. This work uh, was done earlier uh, as a part of a research project uh, in Maryland. And let me run the video and you will see uh, uh, the details about how we have used the MEMS based flexible sensor 
uh, for breast cancer diagnosis. Okay. Now, uh, another important point is to use uh, software to make understand how exactly our uh, sensor will work and you can use a software called Maya to do this uh, uh, to, to present your work right. Uh, it is an animation software right and I use it to uh, explain what is the purpose of uh, the, the sensor design and how we are going to use the sensor for understanding the tissue property. So, I will run this thing and you will understand uh, what is the purpose. Okay. So, uh, you have seen the video right. Now, what you see is are the results obtained using the MAMS based electromechanical phenotyping of breast cancer. So, using electromechanical sensor uh, we are phenotyping breast cancer uh, tissues and what we will be looking at uh, are the uh, results obtained through the experiments particularly you will see the elasticity and you will see the resistance values. Elasticity in a normal patient uh, and resistance in a normal patient uh, tissue from the normal patient versus uh, elasticity in the patient in the tissue obtained from a pa patient who is suffering from a cancer. In this case we are comparing normal and IDC, IDC stands for invasive ductal carcinoma. Hmm. So, we will see and we will also compare epithelial versus stoma region. Now, 70 percent of the cancer occurs in epithelial region. So, we will understand how the epithelial tissue is different than a stomal tissue. We will also see how the epithelial normal will look different than epithelial cancer and stomal normal will look different than stomal cancer. Right. So, if you see the slide that is what is shown here that there is a elasticity values there is a and here you can see the epithelial values and stomal values and here also in case of IDC you can see epithelial values and stomal values. These values are significantly different while these values are also significantly different as well as these values are also significantly different. We have done the statistical analysis to understand the is this statistically significant or not in, in all the cases we found that the results are statistically significant thus we can uh, uh, thus we can use this sensor to delineate the, uh, the tissue obtained from the cancerous region versus the 
tissue from the normal or benign region. There if you take the another patient or tissue from another patient, you can easily again see that there is a change in the elasticity when we talk about epithelial versus stromal region in case of normal tissue. While when you take the tissue from the patient suffering from invasive ductal carcinoma, there is again a change in the epithelial and stromal region in terms of resistance. But if you compare uh, two different cases, then you can clearly see a huge difference between the epithelial region in case of the uh, 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 tissue obtained from a normal patient versus tissue obtained from the IDC as well as the stromal region also you can see a huge difference right. Now, if I go for further understanding of the immunohistochemistry, we can see that there are several kind of biomarkers that are used to understand whether there is a presence of cancer or not in a given tissue and uh, there is uh, this uh, HNE images are epithelial versus stromal in both the cases and we can see that the, the biomarkers are HNE, uh, 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 cadherin, e cadherin, estrogen uh, receptor, uh, there is a red SMA right brown uh, p63 uh, then we have ki67 so these are the few of the biomarkers there is also a biomarker called her so several things are used to understand which is these are gold standards actually these are gold standards and the gold standard suffers from lot of false positive and false negative results and thus we have or we are trying to engineer devices such that uh, these devices will not just rely on the gold standard, but also depending on the properties of the tissue, uh, it will help the oncopathologist to make a decision whether, whether a uh, tissue obtained from, from a person is cancer or not, thus reducing false positive and false negative results. So, these are like a helping platform for an oncopathologist, which is a helping platform the complete series that we are looking at. Okay. Uh, if you see further and you compare the uh, DCIS that is ductal carcinoma in situ versus LCIS which is lobular carcinoma in situ, still you can see a very clear difference in epithelial and stromal region in case of elasticity as well as in case of resistance. These are resistance values, these are elasticity values. When you can, uh, talk about IDC versus ILC, this invasive ductal carcinoma versus invas invasive lobular carcinoma, also you can see a significant difference between the elasticity value in epithelial and stromal region as well as when you talk about ID, ID, ID uh, uh, C versus ILC in terms of resistance, then also you can see a clear uh, demarcation between the two values, right. So, the thus the sensor cannot only delineate between epithelial and stromal region, it can also help us to understand how the cancer progresses and what are the change in the elasticity value and resistance values as the uh, cancer uh, progresses or from the different stage of the cancer, right. If I uh, put in this particular format, you can clearly see that from patient 1 to patient 5, if I take a normal tissue, right, then I can understand the change in the elasticity and change in the resistance. But if I go for a ductal carcinoma in situ, my elasticity values are coming down, right. And if you go for IDC, my elasticity values are even coming down, right, uh, while the resistance values are going up. Right. The resistance values are going up. You can see here compared to normal, which was around 390, my resistance value for DCIS is about 590 ohm uh, kilo ohms. In case of LCIS, is about 640 kilo ohms. Well, when I when I'm talking about IDC, it is about 730 kilo ohms. When I'm talking about ILC, is about 770 785 kilo ohms. Right. But if you talk about elasticity, then in case from normal to cancerous region, you can see that the elasticity value goes down. And you can see here uh, the elasticity for the normal tissue is around from uh, 80 kilo Pascal uh, to about 110 kilo Pascal, uh, where you could talk about DCIS is about 35 kilo Pascal to 40 kilo Pascal. In case of LCIS is about 30 kilo Pascal, IDC is about 30 kilo Pascal and IL, ILC is about 35 kilo Pascal. So, what we really see is that as the cancer progresses, the tissue gets stiffer as the cancer progresses, the tissue gets stiffer, right. And uh, that is where the elasticity value goes lower, hmm? it is less elastic, it is more stiff, while the resistance of the tissue increases, the resistance of the tissue increases, right. Thus, the sensor can help us to understand not only the elasticity, but also the resistance property. Thus, we can not only understand the mechanical property of the tissue, but also the electrical property of tissue. Right. Now, let us see. <coughs> 
uh, uh, I, I will show you the uh, sensor in my next module, uh, but before that let us see what we have learned uh, in, in group of this module because the idea was to understand the uh, change in the tissue property whether it is a breast cancer or oral cancer it does not matter. Hmm, it is a tissue related cancer of course, we have to do study on oral cancer to get understand uh, how the tissue properties uh, are changing when uh, for, for a pre malignant region versus a malignant region versus just a normal region we have to understand that. Uh, but the idea is that if you want to just understand the mechanical property of a tissue or a cell, you can use a piezoresistive micro cantilever. If you want to understand the electrical property of a tissue or a cell, you can use interdigitated electrodes. If I want to use electrical and mechanical property of a tissue or a cell, then why can I use a electromechanical sensor? If I want to use electrical, mechanical and thermal property of a cell, what can I use? Electrothermomechanical property using the chip that I have shown you as the previous modules. Right. So, now we can understand the dif different tissue properties as the uh, with from onset till disease progression right or onset to disease progression and thus uh, we get a better understanding of how the uh, uh, how the change into our tissue properties can be correlated with the stage of the cancer. Right. Having said that uh, the electronics remains extremely simple. Uh, uh, if you see any electronic module, if I want to understand or change my resistance to a voltage, I can use a Western bridge right. Uh, and then if I want to further understand uh, the signal conditioning circuits, then I have to, I have to uh, go for the uh, uh, further understanding of the uh, signal conditioning module, electronic module right. Uh, <coughs> Uh, starting from the instrument amplifier right uh, and how you are going to filter it uh, the noise and then further uh, uh, how you are going to change it to a digital values. So, you have to use a ADC right which kind of ADC you have to use and why. So, these are all details that we uh, <coughs> we should know if you want to change the signal uh, from a resistance values uh, to a voltage value that can be displayed uh, or resistance values to the elasticity value uh, that you want to display uh, at the uh, for the end user right. So, uh, for that we need to have lot of samples. Now, one drawback you cannot exactly say a drawback or not, but because we do not have that many tissues uh, right now, but uh, what happens if the person is having a different body mask index. So, a tissue taken from a person of certain weight does it match uh, the results are similar with a person who is suffering from the same disease, but uh, of a different weight we, we do not have the idea about that we, we have to study that. Another point is what is a variation from the uh, in case of age. So, that we already have studied and we found that if whether you take a tissue from a, a, a young woman uh, who is suffering from a disease or a older woman uh, su suffering from breast cancer, we see a trend that our sensor can delineate the tissue. Uh, if it is certain uh, uh, if the if from from normal to cancer all right, we can understand the change in tissue property. But uh, with different fat content, with the food habits, with the region, right? Uh, we we have to have uh, this many data to understand the uh, the application where how when this device can be or system can be used in a actual scenario. We have to go through that whole study, right? Only then we can say with accuracy that this system can be uh, used as a helping hand to oncopathologist uh, to determine whether the tissue whether a person uh, that a tissue obtained from a person with biopsy uh, is cancerous or is not right. Having said that you look at the uh, modules uh, uh, from uh, from the first lecture till now and you will understand the importance of understanding the tissue properties with the help of micro engineer devices. Hmm. So, having said that I will end up my module uh, in this lecture today and in the next lecture I will show you the device how it looks like both piezo resistive micro cantilever as well as the uh, flexible electromechanical uh, sensor and then we will continue to the next set of uh, uh, system that relies on understanding the change in the cell morphology. Suppose the cell is taken uh, from a certain region let us say oral cancer right. So, you take the cell and what can be a electronic system that can immediately screen the patient uh, whether the patient should go for the histology or not right. So, we will talk about that uh, in the uh, next modules till then you take care uh, I will see you in the next class.